Hello, Reject Nation. It's Greg Alba here. And Jordan Ross. Hey, he said it for me. Thank yeah. God. Jordan Ross uh, actually lives in Texas. He's visiting town right now. He has a YouTube channel called Cinematics. There's a lot of great movie discussions, analysis, a whole bunch of unique topics on there. I'm telling you guys, it's a channel worth checking out. It's one of our featured channels on our main page. There's a reason why it's a damn good channel so make sure to check it out as soon as you can i want to do a topic video with this homeboy over here we are so close i love it I know. i'm very comfortable yeah. with you cheek to cheek cheek to cheek we, we should just do a whole video, video. Like uh, there, there you go comfortable there you go mm. tickles i had a question over on patreon not long ago how i sort of imagined comic book movies evolving or how i'd like them to evolve so yeah. i thought it'd be a fun talk to do with jordan since he does a lot of comic book movie coverage sure. over on his channel today's video is about how we want comic book movies to evolve down the road to stay yeah. up to date, to stay trending, or to do different things. I guess I'll kick this off. One of my favorite concept ideas is to do a little bit more graphic novel direct mm -hmm. adaptations. One thing I've talked about plenty of times is how I've always wanted to see a Batman year one direct adaptation of that. At one point, Darren Aronofsky wanted to do an adaptation, yeah. but it was totally so different. I always thought it'd be cool to do experimental comic book movies that don't have to be huge budget. Like I've always mm -hmm. thought you could do Batman year one, maybe like a $50 million budget, something yeah. like Deadpool, focus on Gordon uh, becoming Commissioner Gordon or, or building his way up because that also introduces when Batman comes into Gotham. I thought it'd be cool to do that version, but also you would have Batman in there, you'd have Bruce Wayne, but you don't ever make it clear. You don't show images to the audience that Bruce Wayne and Batman are connected. They're the same person. We would know as the audience that Bruce Wayne and Batman are connected because we, we know that. To take the perspective solely from Commissioner Gordon's, I think it'd be cool to do a low budget, same universe type of deal, get a different actor to play Gordon, or it doesn't even have to be completely connected mm -hmm. and do direct graphic novel adaptations. I know we do a lot of movies. Nolan usually takes inspiration from several materials and then adapts it into one story. Yeah. I think it'd be neat to do just one direct, kind of like what Sin City did with yeah. their, with their yeah. movies. Or 300, for example. Like we were saying earlier too, movies that, that kind of build their own universes instead of trying to conform and like fit within this grander universe, like where they're more focused yeah. on what they're leading up to in the grand scheme of things instead of focused on building their own individual worlds and focusing on the characters within this one yeah. movie. That's the other main thing I really like for comic yeah. movies to do because I feel like every character, even in the MCU, I know we got this giant world that the MCU is. Which is awesome. That's like their That's thing. great. That's fantastic. Yeah. The thing is, I don't really feel the universe within the universe uh -huh. on a lot of them. I'm always just fully aware of the bigger universe, the grand universe that you're talking about. With Batman especially, I think that that's a great opportunity to do that right now. And I feel yeah. like they're kind of trying to do that with all the DCEU films they have in mind. They got like a Nightwing movie. They got a yeah. Batgirl movie. They got a solo Batman movie. I think one thing that comic book movies could do more of, more than just individual focused films, build the universes within there. Because within yes. each one of these characters, Spider-Man, Batman, Thor, Captain America, any one of them, there's a universe there. Yeah. I would like it if they could hone in more on that universe. It doesn't mean do solo jokes films no just really build their own individual universes up really make their individual storylines feel like a universe that way when it crosses over it feels like universes crossing over yes. with another universe i agree whereas right now the only one that really has it going for that is the x-men franchise currently because mm -hmm. it's not completely with disney just yet that's one thing I'm hoping that when X-Men crosses over, that they don't lose that. The X-Men universe is its own universe, a really defined world, and then you cross it over into the bigger MCU grand scheme universe, yeah, you know? Yeah, I agree. And a cool way they could do that is, you know, they have all these Infinity Stones, and they can play and with Doctor Strange and Scarlet Witch. They can play with all these different dimensions. So there, there's yeah. a really easy way for them to do that, to build this separate X-Men universe yeah. and then cross it over. I mean, especially because um, the, the, the MCU has been getting really cosmic lately mm -hmm. that it wouldn't be much of a stretch to yeah. be like oh yeah this other dimension where there's a whole yeah. bunch of superheroes exactly. and mutants and stuff like yeah. that I think that'd be a really neat idea too in total all I'd really want for the uh, comic book movies to evolve into is do more direct graphic novel adaptations and that way you could experiment more get different kinds of directors on board and really genre bend it yeah. and then really focus solely not just on an individual movies but building universes within the universe yeah 
That would be agree. the most exciting concept to me. One is we were talking about in another video was animated superhero movies like Into yeah. the Spider-Verse and the Superman movie coming out. I think that that is a really interesting route to take because, you know, it, it makes them feel more like comic books come to life. They have big budgets and really good talent making them. They're amazing. Like Into the Spider-Verse looks incredible. The animation yeah. looks great. A great voice cast. And it has potential to be one of the best Spider-Man movies ever made. And it also kind of opens up the doors to do even even more that you can't do in live action films, or that's more, at least more difficult to do mm -hmm. in live action films. So I think it would be cool to see some more animated superhero films that actually get mm -hmm. huge theatrical releases that aren't just straight to DVD that no one ever sees, except for the diehard fans. Yeah. And the other thing is, I think it would be cool to see more period superhero films that take yeah. place in different times. Because on the DC animated world, they had like Gotham by Gaslight, yeah. which is, uh, you know, Victorian times. Uh-huh, exactly. I think that would be really cool to explore different eras and different yeah. uh, time periods in, within the superhero genre because a lot of them are just contemporary. They're taking place modern day. You know, they're fun and they're exciting, but there's only so much you could do in this current setting. Like I said, I was talking to Koi Jandro about it. He had an idea to do a Fantastic Four movie set in the 60s. That'd be neat. Which would be really That'd cool. Be Maybe do Blade movie because in the comics, Blade was born in the, I think, late 1920s. So you could do a Blade movie set in the 1940s in London. That would be cool. That would would be yeah. awesome because it would be in the middle of World War II. There could be Nazi vampires. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite comic books I've ever read is actually uh, this comic book called Batman Thrill Killer, mm -hmm. which is all in like, it's like the 40s or 50s, but it's a very film noir aesthetic. Yeah. It's the whole bat world, with the uh -huh. rogue gallery and everything and the bat family, but it's all in that aesthetic. Yeah. And I would love to see that. Like you don't have to do these movies that are all about connecting to its one universe. Exactly. I think you can get to a point because I know people were like, it's kind of weird having the standalone Joker film and maybe right now it is having this standalone Joker film the reason why that's weird is because the DCU whatever that universe is called yeah. is not firmly established just yet yeah. it, it hasn't really found its footing no and I think that's why having this standalone Joker film feels off right now but once I think they get that really underground I think doing these separate genres or doing these graphic novel adaptations. Because what I was talking about with more than just individual movies is the method seems to be that the MCU has really done well. Standalone superhero films and then cross them over eventually to the bigger picture. I'm talking about more than just a standalone superhero film, but building that universe within there. The reason why I like the Batman Year One idea is because that's a lower budget film. It's not a $200 million film. It's a $50 yeah. million dollar film right there idea. And you could do that with like a whole bunch of different characters too. If you yeah. wanted to go with the smaller characters or smaller worlds, worlds within worlds, is yeah. you could do smaller films that don't have to be these giant massive blockbusters. Exactly. And you could, that way you put more focus because you don't have as much money. So you can't do as big of like these huge yeah. action spectacles. The character focus. Yeah, character focus, which like Logan yeah. is one. It focuses on on the characters more so than a lot of other superhero movies. And I think that is a really interesting way to go about it because that would make you care. Because a lot of people are saying they're getting superhero fatigue and all this stuff. That would be a good way to make you care about these characters a little bit more. They're Absolutely. not just these heroes that are invincible and there's a beam coming out of the sky yeah, yeah. and the, you know all the aliens flying down. It's more personal and intimate. One thing that I feel that most MCU films lack or even the DC films too. A big part of building a universe within a universe is really establishing its villains super well. I saw Black Panther recently and I think uh, Eric Killmonger is the greatest MCU villain we've had the, so far. Better than Loki? I think he's better than Loki. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Loki's, That's exciting. Loki's that rare exception too, yeah. When I look at Spider-Man, I'm like, he has a whole awesome yeah. rogue gallery. Yeah. All these guys have a great rogue gallery. They should all have their gallery. own like nemesis that yeah. like, plays this big part in their, uni in their individual universe. That's how universes. you build the universe yeah. within the universe. And then with Batman, he's got the Bat family. That's why I'm like pretty intrigued about what Warner Brothers is trying to yeah. do right now. Yeah. It, it's, it's all about timing and allowing it to grow and evolve there. But that's, that's where I want issue, to like it yeah. evolve. Be patient because a lot of comic book movies, especially after Marvel, because Marvel has been patient. You know, they, they're the ones that started this whole yeah. shared Infinity universe. Infinity War has been taking a long time to yeah. get to. So <laughs> they're slowly taking their time. We're invested. We care about these characters. All these other, you know, properties like DC and other superheroes, I think they need to do a better job at being patient and building the groundwork yeah. instead of being like, oh, we have to catch up with Marvel. Let's just throw it all in this one movie. I think that would play a big part in 
the future of superhero movies. The other as thing well. too, I like more of, and I feel like we're again referencing the X Men franchise, crossing genres more. Yeah, I feel, I feel like Marvel does a pretty good job at subtle crossover genres. Yeah, Ant Man's like a heist film. Winter Soldier is like a spy, spy thriller. Yeah, space opera. Uh, space Guardians opera. Of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Galaxy. Yeah. yeah, like they do a good job at that. Sometimes they're more subtle than others. And then you know, Spider Man Homecoming is like a teen a high school. 80s yeah, John movie. Hughes it, film. What I've been seeing with X Men is they've really been doing full heartedly different genres. Yeah, like a, a horror, a western. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or Deadpool being just a full-on comedy. Yeah, exactly. Doing stuff like that I think would be cool to experiment with our heroes I on agree. too. Really, really genre bend it a yeah. hell of a lot more. And I think when you do period pieces that genre bends it a lot exactly. more too. Like imagine one thing with, I think it was in X-Men Origins where it showed flashbacks of Wolverine fighting in World War II and all this stuff. Yeah. Why couldn't they have done a movie that takes place during World War II yeah. with Wolverine? Like that would have been That awesome. would have been neat instead of just a montage. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Or do like go back even further and do stuff like set in the 1800s or the 1700s. Mm. That would add something fresh to the superhero genre. League of Extraordinary Gentlemen kind of tried to do that. It was a yeah. bad movie. You know, something like that. If, the concept is cool. Yeah, you could yeah. do. I want a League of Extraordinary Gentlemen Netflix series. That would be I neat. think it would be real and like dark and gritty, but like yeah. set in that time period would be really cool. I think in some ways the shows are cooler than the movies. Yeah, and that yeah. that's kind of like the future of, I think, the superhero genre as well yeah. as TV shows. I I think we're going to get a lot more TV shows yeah. because more money is being thrown at TV shows more than ever. It seems like the creative freedom goes more to TV shows now mm -hmm. and there's there's more TV than ever before. So I think the future will have more TV shows for our bigger heroes too. Yeah, because networks are going to have to get their own superhero shows yeah. to compete because exactly. <laughs> like all like Netflix and Hulu and all of these, you know, uh, which are CW, already doing Freeform. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they all have these superhero shows. I think that's definitely going to play a big part in the future of this genre. What ideas would you have for how you'd want comic book movies in general to evolve? Please put them in the comment boxes below. Engagement. Let us know what you think of our ideas. They're going to hate me. That's true. You should be used to it by now though. No. No. It no. still stings. Every time. Yeah. I'm this much closer to killing myself. Okay. Yeah. Subscribe to The Real Rejects. Yeah. Click that notification bell to get notified every time one of our videos is out. And check out our Patreon. A lot of exclusive videos over there. In fact, this video idea was created because of someone asking us a question on Patreon. Weekly Q&A is over there. Last but not least, make sure to check out Jordan Ross on the Cinematics YouTube channel. Gonna shoot a video for his channel for, with him right now. Make sure to check it out. A lot of great movie topics on there. A lot of comic book related stuff on there too. Go subscribe right away. What he said.